find a confidence interval by hand and actually interpret it the correct way uh, using um, the normal distribution. So we have 58 sequel birds and they have a mean weight of 47.2 pounds. So we took 58 birds at random and this is their average weight. So this is the sample mean. And then we're told the population standard deviation, SD, is 3.2. The question is to find a 95% confidence interval for the population mean weight of all these birds. So solution. SOL means uh, solution. <laughs> all right, so let's find the variables here. So we have 58 sequel birds, so that's n. That's the sample size. So the total number is always n. So n is equal to 58. Um, we have a mean weight of 47.2 pounds. So that's the sample mean, right? Because that comes from the 58 birds. The 58 birds, that is the sample size. So this comes from the sample size, therefore this is the sample mean. So the symbol we use is an X with the bar. That's, that's always the symbol, really weak chalk. That's always the symbol for the sample mean. So 47.2. And then here we have the population standard deviation. So the population standard deviation, that's sigma. Okay, so sigma is equal to 3.2. Okay. If it was the sample standard deviation, it would, be, it would be lowercase s, right? But sigma is the population standard deviation. Okay, we want a 95% confidence interval for the mean. Whenever you're trying to find a confidence interval for the mean, you're either going to use z or t. Okay, that's how it works. So if you have the population standard deviation, we're going to use z. That's why I have the critical values here. If otherwise, you have to use t. So we're going to use z. In other words, we're going to use the standard normal distribution to find a confidence interval. If they gave us the sample standard deviation, it would be different, right? We would use the t distribution. So population standard deviation, so we're going to use z, and it's 95%. To make it really easy so we don't have to use any tables, I wrote down the common critical values over here for the z distribution, so for the normal distribution. So in this case, it's 95%, so our critical value is going to be 1.96. So z is equal to 1.96. All right, so you read the question, you write down all the variables. All you have to do now is find the confidence interval. Well, the formula is super easy. It's x bar minus e, comma, x bar plus e. So we already know what x bar is, right? So you just got to find e and plug everything into the formula. Super easy. Well, what's e? e? It turns out e is always the same, no matter what. So if you ever open the back of a statistics book, it's always the same. It's always the critical value, so in this case, z, times, times the standard deviation of your statistic. In this case, x bar, it's called a statistic. Why, what is a statistic? A statistic is a number that tells you something about the sample. So e is always the critical value times the standard deviation of x bar. What is that in this case? Well, in this case, it's sigma over the square root of n. The point is, if you open your statistics book and you look in the back, there's like a million formulas for E, and they all look really scary, but the, they're all the same. They're all critical value times some crazy formula, where that crazy formula is the standard deviation of your statistic. Anyways, didn't want to derail. That's the formula for E in this problem. Then you just plug everything in. So Z here, we said was 1.96. Sigma is 3.2. 3.2. And then n here is uh, 58. I've got to write it down. It makes it easier. So square root of 58. So I plug everything in. You go to your calculator, which I haven't done this problem. I just made it up right now. I have no idea what the answer is. We'll find out. Uh, times 3.2 divided by square root of 58. Whoops, 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 whoops. 1.96 times 3.2 divided by square root 58. Uh, I got, okay, so I'm going to use two decimals here. So, uh, you know what? I'll be lazy. I'll use one. This is, this is approximately 0.8. I didn't, I didn't even put the approximately symbol. Yeah, it looks right. Looks, looks good. Okay, so approximately 0.8. All right, now we're done. Now we just got to plug everything into the formula. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, erasing all this. Oh, and x bar was uh, 47.2. Let's not forget that. I erased it. Bad. Right, so 47.2, that's x bar, minus 0.8, comma, and then 47.2 plus 0.8. Okay, 47.2 minus 0.8, that's going to be uh, 46.4, um, right? Yeah, because if you add 0.6 to this, you get to 47, and you add 0.2 more, that's 47.2, right? Ooh, some math there without a calculator. 
And this one's easy. Uh, 47.2 plus 0.8, that's going to be 48. So that's your confidence interval, right? You just plug everything in here and work it out. So how do you interpret this? I hate to make this video longer, but let, let's interpret it because no one ever does. Really quickly, let's interpret. So to interpret this, erase this. You start by measuring the confidence level. So you say with, well, the confidence level here is 95. So with 95% confidence, always start by mentioning that. You don't want to derail from this language. Um, a lot of people will say there's a 95% chance, there's a 95% probability. That's not really that correct. The best way to say it is confidence. Confidence has a specific mathematical meaning, which we'll discuss in a minute. So with 95% confidence, then usually you can just go to the last sentence. So the population mean weight of all the words. So the population mean weight, so the pop, mean weight, beautiful stuff, of all Zico birds. So start by mentioning the confidence level, then you go to the last sentence, the population mean weight of all Zico birds is between, so I'll put is BT, and then you go to your answer, 46.4 and 48. So start by mentioning the confidence level, go to the last sentence, and then just say is between and these numbers here. What does this mean? Uh, a couple ways to think about it. The easiest way is as follows. If you do this a hundred times, what's going to happen? You're going to get a hundred different numbers, right? hundred different answers. So you get a hundred different numbers, you get a hundred different answers. So if you do this a hundred times, you get a hundred different answers. Ninety-five of those times, the answer is correct. In other words, your interpretation is correct. The actual mean weight of all the Zico birds in the entire world is going to be between these numbers. Um, that was kind of rushed, but I hope that made sense. That's it.